Make sure you stop at the OTR Essential Store at Pro Wrestling Tees and hashtag buy a shirt. Buy a shirt. I did. Mine are on the way. And yours should be too. After all these years, you've got some shirts. Now let's start buying some. And then after that, what you can do if you haven't done so already, hashtag subscribe or die to this channel. Then take a look at the bell. Click the bell. What the hell? So that way, each week when I upload these Impact Wrestling reviews, you'll be one of the first to know. Assuming YouTube's notifications, of course, will actually work. And Lord knows, we all need to band together for a greater good to work to hashtag save impact wrestling because this show is in a bad place period and it reflects in the viewership numbers this week they lost over 50,000 viewers which I would like to attribute solely to the fact that people knew that Swole Mates was coming on after impact and they decided that they were going to beat the rush and stop watching the channel for the night and who could blame them but it probably has a little bit more so to do with the changing in the narrative in the immediate run-up to this week's show around Alberto El Patron and the fact that not only might he potentially be innocent, Lord, who could have ever posed that question on the Oterra Central channel, but that Paige might indeed potentially, allegedly, be guilty. So now that that kind of specter had wore off and people had watched last week's show, fewer people were watching this week's show. It was still the second most watched show on the network on Thursday night, but it's running but naked way behind Young and the Restless reruns. Victor Newman still draws money. Global Force Wrestling, Impact Wrestling Show, does not. This company needs to step their game up because, again, what I saw out of this show this week was largely unacceptable. <laughs> At least unlike New Japan... Global Force Wrestling decided, hey, if we're going to kick off the show with the match, we need to introduce the fans to both of the competitors. What a novel concept, I know. Sammy Guevara and Drago. Imagine that. And as the match plays out, and again, Drago just looks badass with that whole tongue thing and the mask and everything. Guevara hits this incredibly great and awesome looking 540. It looked great both in real time and slow-mo. So, of course, Drago kicks out of it and then ends up connecting on the running DDT and wins. I like Drago, and I'm cool with having this Super X Cup, but I don't understand why you're putting over AAA on a Global Force Wrestling show. Who does this shit? And if you say, well, nobody else does it, that's what makes it genius. No, nobody else does it because it's fucking stupid, especially when you're a company like now Global Force Wrestling trying to establish your brand and your identity. Your brand and identity is the home talent is weaker than talent in other promotions. Who's booking this shit? So Sienna squashes Amber Nova for all intents and purposes. And I was sitting there. This is your unified knockouts champion. I believe she's supposed to be a villain. What at any point in time did she do in this squash match to actually get any heel heat? Part of the purpose of doing these type of squash matches is to get some heat. And she got absolutely no heat. And especially once she stood up to a certain horse face, to me, that flipped her instant baby face. And next week, we've got a knockouts title match. Whatever. Just keep that horse face off my fucking TV, please. <laughs> Somebody get that bitch some carrots and oats, please, and get her the 
fuck out this review. Anyways, moving on. You had a six-man tag. Here's Damus and freaking Octagon Cito again. And the other guys are all actually on the Global Force Wrestling roster. Why are we devoting another segment on our television programming to guys that are non-roster members? Furthermore, once again, why in the fuck are we putting over another promotion instead of putting over one of the guys that are actually going to be there with Global Force Wrestling. That makes absolutely no fucking sense. Again, who's booking this shit? And then when you get to the question of who's booking this shit, once again, why is Sanjay Dutt being treated like the bad guy? Somebody has stolen what right now is his property that rightfully belongs to him. And he's the one getting ushered away. He's the one being kicked out of the building. He's the one being treated like the bad guy here. All the while, Trevor Lee is able to keep the X Division title and there's absolutely no punishment. I enjoy the story here. I enjoy the concept of it. It's just from a logic standpoint, it fails on so many different fucking levels. You could actually, by incorporating some logic, make this story go to a whole different level. But again, it seems like this company, and they've done it for years, just can't be bothered to figure out the small, important details that could really take a good story and kick it up another notch. The Dick Storm wants to know, baby. We got time for Octagon Cito, but not the cowboy James Stone? That sounds like some grade A certified bullshit. And then again, talking about trying to get over and put over people from other companies. El Hijo de Fantasma. Whoop de fucking do. Who the fuck is this guy and who the fuck cares? Maybe there's a few people that know, but honestly, a lot of the people watching don't know, don't fucking care. Why spend so much effort to hype up a guy that people don't know about and don't care and isn't going to be part of your long-term vision, period. At least I could say that a guy on the roster won, but why hype up all this crap about Seidel calling out Bruce Pritchard just to do what they freaking did? And furthermore, why are we putting over Bruce Pritchard's stupid fucking podcast and Bruce Pritchard in general on Global Force Wrestling's television program, Impact Wrestling. And then when Bobby Lashley's coming out, why, oh why, is Lashley having to chase down a title shot? Isn't this pretty well accepted and understood Wrestling 101 that if you have the title, lose said title, you get some type of guaranteed fucking rematch. But again, using basic wrestling logic seems such a departure for this company and it has been for so many fucking years. So Bobby Lashley won the title shot. I know who did really deserve a title shot. Who am I talking about? Why, of course, the cowboy James Storm. I understand wanting to get guys on television and sometimes that leads to you having to kind of condense things, hence why you get... Uh, tag matches, so on and so forth. But maybe if we didn't devote several segments of television time to people that weren't actually on the fucking roster, we wouldn't have to lump Moose, EC3, Eli Drake, and Eddie Edwards all into one segment, into one match. And furthermore, what the fuck was the point of this four-way? I mean, granted, at least there were people to give a fuck about here. And of course, I'm not referencing the lame-ass Swole Mates and whatever the fuck fuck that show is. Oh my god, that looks like a disaster. I know I'm not watching and I'm sure none of you are either. I do have to say this, Eli Drake, you are technically younger than me by over a year. Either shave the damn goatee or dye it. You're 35 or whatever the hell you are, 34 at this point, and you've got gray in your goatee. It makes you look older, makes you look goddamn ridiculous. Once you get to 40, it can actually help your look. Right now, it ages you, and it's just not a good look. But as I'm watching this match the whole time, I see these guys, and I'm like, this is who this company should be built around. These are the guys that could help it prove the product at least a little bit, and in particular for Moose or EC3, one of these guys should be in the world title picture, if not both, and one of these guys should be the standard bearer and the world champion for this company now, not fucking Alberto El Patron. The thing that they want to talk about, EC3 being a world champion. What EC3 need to worry about is a surprise cowboy attack from James Storm. Woo! Ride the dick, Storm, baby. I'm a fan of comedy shit in professional wrestling. I love some variety, some spice. But if you're going to do it, it better be good. Because there's nothing that's more cringe to me 
in professional wrestling than trying to do funny and flat out failing. And I'm sorry, Fat Colt Cabana is not funny. It's stupid. He does nothing for me at this point in time. Joseph Park, a little bit. He's got some comedic timing, but again, sometimes it's about the people you got to work with and the material that you have. Also, this whole entire thing to me is so stupid. Why would Fat Colt Cabana be pursuing a Canadian and trying to marry a Canadian in order to gain U.S. citizenship? I'm pretty sure that's not how any of this fucking works. But of course, once again, why would anybody involved with Global Force Wrestling bother to do a basic fucking Google search? After watching this week's show, it was very evident that there's even more work to do if we're going to save Impact Wrestling. And I'm going to need some help. A lot of help. And I know you're watching, Fool Killer. So this message is for you. We don't need long-haired, open-eyed, live-streaming fool killer. We need jump-cutting, pun-making, fourth-dimension, ass-kicking fool killer. I realize, as a Chris Saban nuthugger, you still have bouts of depression over the fact that the Motor City Machine Guns are not involved with Global Force Wrestling whatsoever. But you still have Ethan Carter III, your savior of professional wrestling. I realize maybe it got bad and you got to a low point and you're really, really low right now. But we're here for you and we support you because by God, we need you. I need you. Who else needs you? You, 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 all of you. And most importantly of all, deep down in the cackles of your heart, fool killer, you need you. No more live streaming. No more long hair. We need the old fool killer back, damn it. I need your help to save Impact Wrestling. And I've got one message for you. It was given to me just a little bit ago. And I hope you know what it means, because you should. Two plus two equals four. And why do we need the old fool killer back? Because of bullshit like what they're doing with Conan and freaking LAX. Now, I don't want to completely bury everything about it because the pre-recorded segments are produced very well. They feel gritty. They feel as close to real as you're probably going to get when it comes to professional wrestling. Even though it's confusing early on in the night when they're showing... Um, Alberto's brother and dad showing up at the arena. Then in the pre-tape uh, segments, they're talking about Thursday. So that's kind of confusing in and of itself. It really is. It's like they put the cart before the horse a little bit. But the problem with this is you get so much focus on the 50-plus-year-old Conan that you forget who the tag team champions even are, what they look like, what their damn names are. And honestly, at this point in time, I still don't know if I know what the freaking tag champs look like and what their damn names are. At least I will say this. When I tweeted out criticism of Conan, unlike a lot of the punk pussies in WWE, he was at least man enough to respond and not block somebody. And I respect that. It doesn't mean that what he said wasn't stupid and ridiculous because it fucking was. Because the problem with this whole shit is that it all focuses on Conan. It's not helping get the other guys over because, again, as I referenced, and you go back and watch the segments, you don't even see the fucking tag champions, the one guys that are actually wrestling. Now, I will say I'm cool with the use of beeps. I mean, ultimately, this is pre-taped, so why not use some of that to your advantage? Because they're even with some of the negatives that come associated with that, spoilers coming out, the show having a different feel to it, you, on the flip side of that, know where the beeps are going to be and you can plug in the gaps and you can beep out where you need to beep. Just don't overdo it. It's good to do it a little bit, but don't do it too much because then it makes it seem like the product is really, really vulgar. And I don't know if you're in a place, a point in time where that's where you want your identity to be. The problem with this whole story to me though, even though they fouled it throughout the course of the night, and I do appreciate that, that you at least try to build up to that story. It was your major storyline arc of the night and you wove it in all throughout the show and that fundamentally was done well. Where's the payoff? 
who would Alberto actually wrestle out of this group one-on-one for the title? Unless you're going to throw somebody like Lashley into the group, who in the fuck is he going to wrestle out of this group one-on-one for the title? Why are you throwing your world champion into the mix with this group when there's no real credible threat for him in terms of an opponent? What are you building to? A six-man tag, Familia versus Familia, where you're going to end up throwing in Homicide? That's how you're going to choose to utilize your world champion or even worse based off of the way. And again, if you hadn't watched a lot of this product or frankly, even if you have, the way it's being built right now, Conan, is that it's you and Alberto that have the major issue, that have the major heat. It's all about you and Alberto. And it would seem only logical that at some point in time, the only real payoff to this would be for Conan to challenge Alberto for the freaking Global Force Wrestling title. And we're in 2017, Conan's in his 50s with one goddamn good kidney. Who wants to see this shit, and more importantly, who would book this shit? I have no problem with Conan being on Impact Wrestling each week. Because he can talk, and he provides some old school credibility, he provides some things. But... When you put so much of the emphasis and focus on him and not enough on the members of the group and in particular, most importantly, the actual tag team champions to the point where a few weeks after getting back into watching it, I'm still not 100% sure what both of their guys' fucking names are and I wouldn't be able to point them out on the website if you took away the nameplates. I would have no clue who your tag champs are. That is a fucking problem. That means the heat that the manager is getting is not translating to the talent. And that's not how it's designed to work. That's not how it's supposed to work. And that's not how good wrestling companies would make it work. But of course, we are talking about Global Force Wrestling. And I just used the term good wrestling company. So that should fucking show me right there. As is so many other things right now with this product, what are you trying to do? What's your brand about? What's your identity? And ultimately, with any of this crap, where's the fucking payoff where's the payoff again that's it for this week's impact wrestling review make sure you buy a shirt subscribe or die we're gonna make wrestling fun again and most importantly of all we're gonna band together to hashtag save impact wrestling and of course i am the schleg daddy and this is otrs central where it's not the wrestling show you want just the wrestling show you need thank you and i'll see you later